Hey you guys, it's been a while. Um, so many things have happened throughout the month of August. Really great things. But um, I wanted to take a small break from the YouTube community and focus on them. So yes, it's been a while, but I am back. During the last couple weeks, I finished my musical South Pacific. If you missed my Get Ready With Me musical theater edition, I'll link it right here. I also made my debut with a symphony orchestra this summer, which was really cool. It was been on my bucket list as a performer, as you know, something to do. Uh, to be a soloist, the only singer with a full symphony behind you was amazing. And I might do a story time for that in the future, but it was great. And it took a lot of time to prepare all that music. Again, why I took the break from YouTube, but wonderful experiences. Sometimes you just have to take a break and focus on one thing to make it enjoyable when it's, you know, one of your goals. And outside of performing, I have finally saved up enough money to buy my first adult bedroom set, which sounds really dumb to other adults that buy expensive things all the time. But for me, a lot of the things I purchase are like secondhand, inherited, bought from thrift stores, pre-owned basically. And this purchase was my first uh, major furniture purchase, completely brand new, paid for it to be installed here in my apartment on the third floor, which I'm sure the movers love to do. But you'll see my bedroom set in my apartment tour video coming out in September. But today I wanted to talk to you guys about how I lost 30 pounds. The photos in the thumbnail are completely real, untouched, unedited. They're just cropped because there are people in the photos with me. They are completely real. Um, I have a bachelor's and a master's degree so that is six years of college, which were six years of late night studying, very poor health choices, um, health choices, I mean like dietary choices. Um, like, you know, college, the college diet, a lot of frozen food. I had no idea what I was eating, uh, what it was doing to my body, and I had no knowledge on like personal health when it comes to diet. So six years of the college lifestyle, um, I steadily gained weight each year. So it wasn't like one year, boom, she gained all this weight. It was just over that six year period. I saw the photo on the left-hand side of the thumbnail, which was taken uh, my last semester of graduate school. And I looked on my Facebook, I don't have a lot of pictures from that time, and I think it was because of my size. I didn't want to remember that time in life, but that one picture, which was tagged by a friend of mine at a concert that I was at, um, really kind of resonated with me. And for some reason, I just like removed the tag and saved it into a folder to look at later. Anyway, right after graduating, I weighed my heaviest at 165 pounds which uh, reference, I am 5'6", so it wasn't like morbidly obese, it was like right at the top before you hit the obese uh, scale, like right when 5'6 hit the scale into being obese, I was like right on that edge. So it wasn't like, whoa, she's super overweight, you could just tell like, she's put on some weight since college. Right after college, I landed a job working on a cruise ship. Some of the biggest advantages health-wise to working on a ship were um, having your dinners prepared for you in the terms of like a salad bar, fresh grilled chicken breast. Um, you didn't really have the option to go out and get processed or fast food ever because every evening uh, the ship was obviously at sea so you couldn't just jump in your car and go get fast food. On the other hand, you did have to watch what you ate because it was still buffet style but as long as you kept your portions under control or you ate right before shows like I did, I didn't really have time to sit and take in like courses of a meal. It was go in, prepare your salad and your meat and your protein and go. The other major advantage was that the full guest gym was available to us if you were an entertainer, and it was highly, highly encouraged that you work out several times a week. Um, fellow entertainers and myself, we would go and work out just as, you know, something to do socially. When I went to the gym, I will be completely honest, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know how to use a single machine, was never an athlete in high school. I was the choir, theater, performance, drama, like nerdy kid. I didn't run track, soccer, none of that stuff. So you put me in a gym, I was like, it was awkward. So one day I was looking up, you know, various free workout programs, cause I can't really, you know, hire the trainer to show up on the ship. So I was Googling, excuse me, I was Googling and searching various workout programs. And the first thing I found that I wanted to include in this video, If you haven't already heard of the Couch to 5K, Google it. Essentially, in a nutshell, it is a program that trains you from sitting on the couch, hence Couch to 5K, takes you from sitting on the couch in between a six and eight week period 
trains you each week to be able to run three miles or 30 minutes. Now backtracking to where I said I was not an athlete, that is very true. I hated running. It was awful. Um, I didn't understand why people got joy out of this. This is just the worst thing ever. But I thought to myself, okay, if it's a training program and I read a bunch of reviews and everybody said good things about it generally, and it worked you out, I think week one, you ran for 60 seconds and walked for 90. And I thought, okay, if they're gonna build me up slowly, I'll print on a calendar and I'll cross off, uh, cross off each workout throughout the week. And I think it was three runs per week for eight weeks. So I would cross it off. It actually just became something to you know see how far I could go. But essentially over that eight week period, you know, I'd run three minutes and then five and then 10 and 15, 25. And then there was the one morning. It was the last workout of the program. Sorry, I have an itch. <laughs> last week, last workout of the program. It was the 30 minute run. And so I made sure it was a day that I didn't have to work. There were no shows that day. I woke up early. I had a big breakfast, you know, some scrambled eggs and some potatoes and just a bunch of water. And I went upstairs, I got on the treadmill, put in a really good running mix and I did it. It was done because I didn't have to think about it. The program had already trained me to be okay with, you know, 5, 10, 15, 25 and now 30 minutes. So if you are looking for a program that is essentially free in every way, there is now even an app on your phone. You can listen to whatever you want and you just turn the app on while you're listening and working out. And when it's time to run or walk, a little voice pops up while you're still listening to your music and says, time to run for 60 seconds or 90 second walk. So essentially it is a free trainer that sits in your phone while you listen to your own music. Like it doesn't get any easier than that. It's free, you don't have to pay for it. And I promise you it gets results. <sighs> That's the only good thing that comes from running. I do not like, I still don't like running. It's just something that I am used to. It's kind of like my Zen time. I just turn the surface on my phone off, get on the treadmill, put my music on and go. Like no one talks to me. It is just my time. I should also point out, it feels really good when you are not an athlete at all and you can get on the treadmill or go outside and run for 30 minutes. That was my Olympics. As far as I'm gonna go, three miles. I think there was one day one day, some of the dancers, and we're talking like very professional dancers, challenged some of the singers who were not as athletically built, never, um, to do a power hour on the treadmill where we ran six miles or one hour. I think I did it like twice. And it was awesome do it during that time because it was competitive because you had like your castmates on your side and if they're gonna go, I'm gonna go. And I got very competitive and it was awesome. But just the 30 minutes, was great and you feel really proud of yourself that you completed it you don't change anything in your bank account and you know everything I've experienced with the couch to 5k is great if you're watching your finances google this print it out at work take it to the gym and you're done my other tips for doing this program one definitely use that app that I talked about just because you can play your own music it can be your iTunes Google music whatever Spotify whatever you listen to it just talks over that music. Just kind of like when you get a text or a call while you're listening, you can hear the beep. It's great. I highly recommend just app search, Couch to 5K. It's a free program. It's a little um, orange icon. I'll link it here if I can find it on Google. Look it up. My next tip for Couch to 5K is give yourself rewards. On my printed calendar that had the runs I did for weeks one through eight, I think after week two or three, I gave myself a reward, like a pedicure or a massage or something. That way I would think, okay, do I really wanna run today? Ugh, I may as well do it, I need three this week and I, I wanna you know, get consistently three weeks so I can go get that reward. And I think pedicures and massages were my favorite thing. My last tip is something I mentioned earlier in this video and it is to treat this running time like your personal time. Shut everything else out, you don't have to worry about your bills, you don't have to worry about work, social life, family, drama, whatever, shut it off. This gym is your time to work out. And I promise you, you will appreciate it and long to do it so much more if you treat it like your own personal me time. Next thing I wanna talk about is the My Fitness Pal app and website. I couldn't talk about Couch to 5K without bringing up My Fitness Pal as well. I did once hear that no amount of exercise can out 
work out a bad diet, and I think that is 100% completely true. You can't eat like garbage and then go work it out. It's just not gonna happen. And my fitness pal was really the first step I took to starting, to, uh, in the process of starting to realize what I was putting in my body. If you haven't heard about this, you can Google it as well. My fitness pal is both an app and a website that allows you to make a free profile, free. Free is a big term on this video and on this channel, free. It's a free program that lets you make a profile, your name, your age, your current weight, how much you wanna weigh, and how much you're gonna work out each week. The program then takes that data and spits out a caloric goal for you to try to you know, aim for each day. It's got your calories, your fat, your proteins, your sugar, so on and so forth. And all you have to do is log everything that you eat during the day. There is even a really cool feature if you have a smartphone. Uh, the camera on the back, you can literally scan the barcode and the barcode will go straight into the program. It'll pull up all the information of what you're eating. It couldn't be any easier. You just program what you eat, how much water you get per day. And at the very end, when you log breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks, there's a button at the bottom and it says like, complete this day or this day is now done. You click it and it says, you know, Kristen, uh, if you eat like this for the next five weeks, you will weigh X amount. And you guys, it was right every single week. If, it, if I ate well and it said I was gonna lose, you know, two pounds in two weeks, I did. If I ate like crap and didn't work out, it would tell me, Kristen, you're gonna gain a pound and a half in a week. And I did, every single time. So again, free resource. All you have to do is download it or use it on your computer, log in what you eat, it'll tell you the results, and you can go from there. Bank account still not affected. One more thing about the MyFitnessPal app, you can make this profile of yours completely private, or you have the option of joining the MyFitnessPal community, which is kind of like a Facebook. You can post your workouts on there, and it'll say, you know, Kristen ran three miles today and burnt X amount of calories, because it can tell me how many calories I burnt on my run, because it has my weight in the program. So if I run, you know, 30 minutes, it'll say you burnt this many hundred calories. And if you have friends on there, they can comment and be encouraging. But some people like this um, account to be very private. Uh, your weight is also completely private. No one can look up and see what you're eating. No one can look and see how much you weigh unless you want to make those things public. I don't think I've ever seen anybody post their weight. I have seen people post their diary of what they eat in case anybody wants inspiration. But just know if you use this program, those numbers and information can be completely private. No one has to see them but you. And again, highly, highly recommend it. My third resource, we're gonna back up just a few months. I have been basically in rehearsal for most of 2016, it feels like. So I haven't had a lot of time between working, teaching, performing, and being in rehearsal to go to the gym as much as I've wanted in the past like six to eight months. So I was Googling online because I was lazy at work and I was Googling like ways to lose weight fast, things that I can do if I can't get to the gym. And the one thing I found that had the best reviews was something called the military diet. And it is a three day diet plan. You follow the breakfast, lunch, dinner um, schedule to a T. There's no snacks, there's no like added sugars to anything. You follow this and I'll link it below if you wanna see the military diet. And there's plenty of videos on YouTube of people doing it. But you do this diet for three days and people lose between four and 10 pounds in a three day period. And yes, I read that and I was super skeptical, like there's no way that's gonna to happen to me. This is dumb, who are people doing this? But I did three days, followed it to a T, way more cottage cheese and plain tuna out of the can than I ever wanna eat again, ever. But for me personally, I lost five pounds in three days. And it was right before a concert that I had, I had to fit into a dress. If you wanna see that picture, but five pounds in three days, following it to a T, didn't add anything, didn't go to the gym, nothing. Just please don't expect those results to remain constant if you go straight back to what you were doing before. You've gotta either keep your caloric intake, you know, a little lower um, or add exercise. There's no way you're gonna lose like 10 pounds and then magically you can go back to what you're eating and keep that 10 pounds off. That's the only thing I would say about the military diet. So those are my three resources, the Couch to 5K, My Fitness Pal, and the military diet. Backing up, to when I was doing the Couch to 5K, uh, working on cruise ships, 
Um, I didn't have cable, obviously, so I started watching a lot of documentaries that my friends had on external hard drives from college or just from traveling. And a lot of these documentaries were about like the American diet or how we've mass produced, you know, wheat and, and gluten and everything else. And it started making me think, like, what am I putting in my body? I've never thought of this before. Like, college was box macaroni and cheese, hamburger helper, like, is not good. I'll just be very honest, not good. I think the only good thing I had in my diet in college was that I didn't drink soda and I absolutely hated beer. That, those were the only two good things about my diet in college. But anyway, each of these documentaries had a point that I found very interesting. I watched ones on veganism, vegetarianism, you know, the paleo diet, going gluten free, so on and so forth. And it made me, A, really respect those people that took the time to research and you know, go against the grain, so to speak, for like paleo. And it encouraged me to want to try these diets. Uh, the first one I did try was being a vegan. I was a vegan, I think, for four weeks when I came home from a contract, I think in March. Um, it was very difficult. I came home, I was living with my parents and they did not live this way at this time. So to come home and say, I want to, you know, not have dairy milk, I'm going to have, you know, almond milk and I'm going to have soy cheese and these products. It was very difficult. Your body felt great afterwards, but um, as much as I respect people who are vegan, and I have many friends who are, and I respect you so much, you do great work, seriously, honestly, it's just not for me. There are still times where I'll make meals that are still vegan, because I do still drink almond milk 90% of the time um, than you know dairy milk, but um, to be like that 100% of the time, I, I can't do that. And it's just, it's not for me. Um, respect those who do have it, but it's just not for me. From there, I did try, you know, being a vegetarian or just incorporating vegetarian dishes to my weekly diet. And then there was a time where I was trying, you know, the paleo or the cutting out of the carbs diet, which I thought was pretty nice. Um, it helped a lot with like bloating. So if you eat a lot of breads or if I eat a lot of breads, I noticed like my lower belly right below the belly button all just be bloated for the afternoon. After experimenting with all these different diets, I came to the conclusion that for me, I wanted something that was just balanced. There was nothing that was off limits, there's nothing I would say no to, because for me, if I say no to something, I'm gonna want it, especially if it's like cookies or sweets or something, I can have them. It's just, you know, a balance. I like to have what's literally called, you know, the balanced diet. Now, to the photo on the right side of the thumbnail, the swimsuit picture was uh, in the summer when I weighed 135. I had taken 30 pounds off and it was great. To be completely honest, I didn't even look at that before picture until I was searching for one to compare to the swimsuit picture. I kind of, uh, I started going through my files to look for like, hey, where are the pictures where I know I weighed 165? The picture on the left, I'm assuming is when I weighed 165 because that was the time in my life when I was heaviest. I don't think I got on the scale the day that picture was taken and said, hey, I'm 165. I just think it was, that time in life and it's one of the few photos I have from that time in life so I included it but you can clearly see like in the face, uh, the midsection, the arms, you can clearly see that there is a significant amount of weight off my body between the before and the after of those photos. My tips for those people who are losing weight and bless you if you are still here watching this video. Number one, please take your time. You are not going to change into the perfect person overnight. You need to focus on one thing at a time. Uh, for me, the first thing I did was just try to drink more water. Like that's the first thing I focused on for maybe a couple weeks to make sure I was hydrated because I noticed that sometimes I thought I was hungry and I was just thirsty. So that was the one thing I focused on before I even focused on like not eating late at night, like three or four hours before bedtime or making sure I went to the gym. Step one was just water for me. So my tip is take it slow. You're going to make mistakes. That's okay. Do not expect to be perfect because it's never going to happen for anyone. Just take it slow, figure out your pace and what works for you. My second tip is to set different goals to keep things interesting. If you just go to the gym to get on the treadmill, six months later, you're gonna be super bored. So if you want to keep it interesting, train for a 5K, take a yoga class, spinning class, take friends to the gym, go outside, walk outside, do whatever you can to just keep it interesting. Humans are curious creatures. We do not like to do things habitually all the time. So change it up, see what you can do, and try to just keep things you know, as spontaneous as you can. And my third tip, and I think is so important, is to find a community. Whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, social media, or friends in you know, real life, get yourself a community because it will help so much 
uh, to help motivate you, inspire you, and keep you going. If you have people that motivate you, that you know, tell you good job at the end of the day, and you know, you can share your milestones and your accomplishments with, get a community. I promise it will make the world a difference. I'd also like to say, just for the record, I'm not a doctor, not a nutritionist, not a coach. These are just references and resources that I use personally to lose weight. So I can't answer anyone's personal diet, weight loss, health, fitness questions. These are just things unsponsored that worked for me. So this September, I have decided to take the Beach Body Challenge. I have never done Beach Body. I've never done Shakeology. Never done a single thing in that realm. My goals for September. There's three of them. Goal one is to have five Shakeology shakes a week. I'm gonna try to do them on the days that I work, obviously Monday through Friday, the work week, but I'm gonna try to change it up, like do different recipes. I have a chocolate Shakeology coming in the mail, so it'll be here hopefully soon, because the challenge I'm doing starts next month. So five Shakeologies a week is goal one. Goal two is to schedule three workouts a week. Whether it's running, I'm doing a yoga class now, walking for 30 minutes or more, I wanna work out three days a week. And my third goal for September, and I've never done this before, it's probably gonna be harder than I think it is, I wanna do a vlog every day of the Beachbody Challenge. It's gonna be like Beachbody Challenge Vlog 1. Like maybe I'll name it BB for Beachbody, like BB Challenge Day 1, I don't know. But I feel like it'll help me be more accountable if I make one every day. That way when it's you know day 12 and I just wanna be done, I don't wanna work out or make shakes or plan or do any of that stuff, I can look back on those videos that you know talk about my goals and how far I've come. Um, and I think it'll help. I've never vlogged that long before for 30 days. I think the longest I've ever done has been 14 on a family vacation and that was a lot of work. So we will see how that works out. So those might be the only vlogs I have in September or videos at all. But if you are interested, please feel free to follow me on my beach body journey. I figure since I lost all this weight, I want to one, keep it off and be like, develop some muscle. It's one thing to be skinny. It's another thing to be fit. Those are two completely different things. I've seen girls that are so skinny, like I can break them, but tell them to drop on the ground and do 10 push-ups. They're not going to do that. There's a big difference between being skinny and being fit. So I want to challenge my body to go to the gym and work out. And you know, even if I do put on weight, if it's muscle, I'm okay with that. If I can I kind of want to be able to do 30 push-ups. That would be amazing. I can do five. Five. Then I just go to girl push-ups. But anyway, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you have currently lost weight or are trying and I missed any tips that you think would be helpful. I'm going to leave those below. If you are just starting your health journey or in the middle of it, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, also leave me comments even if it's just, you know, I'm on my journey. I would love to hear from you guys. And if you want to follow me on my Beachbody vlog challenge, go ahead and click the subscribe button somewhere down below. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful end of summer and I will see you guys next time.